Have you ever heard of a mathematician who refused a million-dollar prize? Today, we delve into the life of Grigory Yakovlevich Perlman. Born on a warm summer day, June 13, 1966, in the city of Leningrad, now known as St. Petersburg, Russia. Perlman is not just any mathematician. He etched his name into the annals of mathematical history by proving the Poincaré conjecture, a task that had stumped mathematicians for over a century. Yet, when offered the prestigious Fields Medal and the Million Dollar Clay Prize for his groundbreaking work, he turned them down, a decision that left the world flabbergasted. Perlman's choices reflect a distinctive stance on recognition and reward in academia, a stance that is as enigmatic as the man himself. This is the story of a mathematician who chose intellectual satisfaction over material gain. A man of principles, Perlman's story is as intriguing as the mathematical problems he solved. Born into a Jewish family in Leningrad, Perlman's journey to mathematical fame began at an early age. His parents, an electrical engineer and a mathematics teacher, recognized and nurtured his intellectual prowess, fostering a home environment that valued problem-solving and academic excellence. The challenges of his Jewish heritage in a country that was often suspicious of those of Jewish descent did not deter Perlman. Instead, they created a resilience that would serve him well throughout his career. By the tender age of 10, Perlman was already distinguishing himself in district mathematics competitions, his prodigious talent shining through. His mathematical abilities were further honed under the mentorship of a 19-year-old coach, Sergei Rukshin, who saw the unique potential in this young boy. Under Rukshin's guidance, Perlman's affinity for mathematics flourished, his keen mind always ready to tackle the next problem. Perlman's educational journey continued at school number 239, a specialized institution for mathematics and physics in Leningrad. This school was a crucible for mathematical geniuses, a place where Perlman's intellectual curiosity was nurtured and encouraged. Beyond the equations and theorems, Perlman also developed a love for chess and music, providing a well-rounded foundation for his later academic pursuits. His early academic successes, including a perfect score and a gold medal at the International Mathematical Olympiad, led to automatic university entry. It was at Leningrad State University that he came under the influence of Viktor Zalgaler and Alexander Danilovich Alexandrov. Despite facing institutional anti-Semitism, Perlman continued to excel, producing significant research papers as an undergraduate. His tenacity paid off when Alexandrov intervened, allowing him to pursue graduate studies at the Leningrad branch of the Shteklov Mathematics Institute. Perlman's early experiences set the foundation for a remarkable academic journey. From a young mathematics enthusiast in Leningrad to a prodigious talent recognized worldwide, Perlman's story is one of resilience, determination, and an unwavering commitment to the pursuit of intellectual fulfillment. Perlman's brilliance shone even brighter during his university years and early career. As a teenager, he was already making waves in the world of mathematics. He demonstrated his exceptional talent at the International Mathematical Olympiad, where he astounded the judges with a perfect score and walked away with a gold medal. This achievement opened the doors to Leningrad State University, an institution renowned for its rigorous academic standards. Perlman's time at the university was an exciting chapter in his life. Under the guidance of accomplished mathematicians, Viktor Zalgaler and Alexander Danilovich Alexandrov, he began to delve deeper into the complexities of mathematics, producing significant research papers even as an undergraduate student. His work was characterized by a unique blend of creativity and precision, a testament to his extraordinary intellectual capacity. However, this period was not without its challenges. Perlman, being of Jewish descent, faced the bitter sting of institutional anti-Semitism. Opportunities that were readily available to his peers were often denied to him, and his path to graduate studies was littered with unnecessary obstacles. But even in the face of such adversity, Perlman's determination remained unshaken. One beacon of support during these trying times was Alexandrov, who recognized Perlman's immense talent and intervened on his behalf. Thanks to Alexandrov's efforts, Perlman found a place at the Leningrad branch of the Steklov Mathematics Institute, a prestigious institution known for its contributions to the field of mathematics. Perlman's graduate work on saddle surfaces was nothing short of revolutionary. His collaboration with prominent mathematicians like Mikhail Gromov and Yuri Burago at the Institut des Hautes Etudes Scientifiques in France brought him to the attention of the international mathematical community. 
His work on Alexandrov spaces and contributions to Riemannian geometry, including solving the sole conjecture of Cheeger and Gromel, further cemented his reputation as a rising star in the world of mathematics. Despite the barriers, Perlman's mathematical genius was impossible to ignore. Perlman's work on saddle surfaces and Alexandrov spaces brought him international attention. His collaboration with esteemed mathematicians like Mikhail Gromov and Yuri Borago at the Institut des Hautes Etudes Scientifiques in France further cemented his global reputation. But it was his deep engagement with Richard Hamilton's Ricci flow equation that led him on the path to his most significant achievement, a breakthrough that would redefine the world of mathematics. The Ricci flow is a process that shapes a complex geometric form into a more streamlined, sphere-like shape. It's a bit like smoothing out the wrinkles in a crumpled piece of paper. In this equation, Perlman found the key to unlocking the solution to a century-old problem, the Poincaré conjecture. This conjecture, proposed by French mathematician Henri Poincaré in 1903, was a puzzle that had baffled mathematicians for generations. It's a theory about the nature of three-dimensional shapes, proposing that any shape that doesn't have any holes and can be stretched or shrunk without cutting or gluing is essentially a sphere. Between 2002 and 2003, Perlman published a series of papers on the Ricci flow on the web. His proposed solution to the Poincaré conjecture was laid bare for all to see. This wasn't just a solution to Poincaré's puzzle, it also encompassed the Thurston geometrization conjecture, a broader theory about three-dimensional shapes. Perlman's proof was a monumental achievement. It was like he had scaled the Everest of mathematics, solving a problem that had confounded the brightest minds for over a hundred years. His work was so significant that it earned him the highest honors in the field of mathematics, the Fields Medal, and the $1 million Clay Prize. But his exceptional work did more than just solve a complex mathematical problem. It challenged the norms of the academic world, sparking discussions about the nature of recognition and reward in scholarly pursuits. Perlman's contributions to mathematics were nothing short of groundbreaking. Despite the recognition, Perlman chose a path few would dare tread. He was offered the Fields Medal, the highest honor in mathematics, along with the Clay Prize, a cool $1 million for solving the Poincaré conjecture. However, Perlman's response was far from predictable. He declined both awards, choosing instead to retreat from the spotlight. His refusal of the Fields Medal and Clay Prize was not due to a lack of appreciation for the honor. Rather, it was a reflection of his unique perspective on recognition and reward. For Perlman, the pursuit of knowledge and the satisfaction of solving complex problems were reward enough. His actions were a testament to his belief that the true value of academic work lies in its contribution to humanity and not in the accolades it might garner. Perlman's unconventional decisions, however, did not stop at refusing the awards. He also resigned from his position at the prestigious Steklov Institute in Russia. This move was more than just a professional decision, it was a withdrawal from the mathematical community as a whole. Perlman's withdrawal from academia was not a retreat into obscurity, but rather a conscious decision to step away from the competitive and often ego-driven world of academia. He chose to live a modest life, focusing on his personal pursuits outside of the mathematical realm. This decision was not an easy one, but it was a choice that stayed true to his principles and values. Perlman's decisions were not without controversy. His refusal of the Fields Medal and the Clay Prize, his resignation from the Steklov Institute, and his withdrawal from the mathematical community sparked widespread discussion and debate within the academic world. Some viewed his actions as a rejection of the academic system, while others saw them as a powerful statement about the true purpose of academic work. In the end, Perlman's actions serve as a stark reminder that the pursuit of knowledge and the satisfaction of solving complex problems can be reward enough in themselves. Perlman's decisions sparked widespread discussion and debate within the academic world. Perlman's story goes beyond mathematical genius. His life, marked by a relentless pursuit of intellectual fulfillment over material rewards, has been a profound testament to his personal principles. His refusal of the Fields Medal and the Clay Prize, two of the highest honors in mathematics, wasn't an act of defiance but rather a reflection of his belief that recognition and reward should not be the driving force of academic pursuit. This unique approach has sparked extensive discussions and debates, challenging the conventional norms and values within the academic world.
his decisions have served as a reminder to scholars and researchers alike that the pursuit of knowledge and understanding should always take precedence over accolades and financial gain. Perlman's legacy is not merely rooted in his extraordinary mathematical contributions, but also in his unyielding commitment to his principles. His story serves as a beacon of intellectual integrity and a potent reminder of the true essence of academia. His contribution to mathematics remains unparalleled, and his unique stance continues to inspire and intrigue.